Good evening, folks, and welcome in to the Fieldhouse at Lake Warren High School, where the NFHS Network is proud to present varsity boys basketball between the Warren De La Salle Pilots and your Lake Warren Dragons. I'm Anthony Schulte, joined by my partner, Ben Shadle, here tonight. The Pilots come into this game 7-5 and five off a tough loss on Saturday to Grand, Grand Rapids Christian. The Dragons come in 6-3 and three off of a loss against Bloomfield Hills on Friday. Ben, how's Lake Warren going to take a quality win here from the Rams? state champion Dallas Al Pilots. Starting lineups here tonight for the De La Salle Pilots, Braden Holder and Armani Portis, Jack Janicek, Phoenix Glasner, and Michael Salaka for the Dragons who just won the tip. Nate Hervilla and DJ Morrow alongside Kevin Tobe, Quay Fly, and Blake Liddell. Dragons start off with possession here tonight as Blake Liddell is going to lose possession of the ball as Jack Janicek on the steal. Pilots with their first possession of tonight's contest. Braden Holder, over. Janicek's got it back up top, back to Holder. Holder is their three-point man from beyond the arc. Big note tonight, Nino Smith, number zero, is out with a illness, so he is not in the starting lineup. Big part of their offense as the first shot from Armani Portis is off front iron and corralled by Lake Orion. Kevin Tobe, wing. He's going to drive, looking down for Quay Fly, but it's disrupted again down low. Janicek, over. This is Phoenix Glasner. Back out, Janicek. Really controlling this offense so far. Here's Portis. Glasner, three ball, and that's off the rim and rebounded by Havrilla. Havrilla running the fast break now. Here's DJ Morrow, and he is going to trip out of bounds. And they're going to call a foul on Jack Janicek. Good try right there by Morrow, the senior, trying to drive past the guy on the baseline. And Ryan Rushlow's in now for Kevin Tobe. So an early quick substitution here for the Dragons. Rushlow's the only freshman on this varsity basketball team for the Dragons. Yes, he is. Quay Fly, he'll put it up, and it's just off. Just misses. Unfriendly roll off the rim there. And Janicek brings the ball up to court once again. Salaka with his first touch of the contest. Over to Janicek, getting signals from his coach. Holder. Usually you see Nino Smith running this offense here for De La Salle. And now you're seeing Janicek really control that ball with Holder still playing that shooting guard's position. Glasner with the three. That's short again. And they're going to say, that's out of bounds, going back down. Dragon possession. So the Dragons really bring good intensity on defense so far, and that's really what they need to do against this De La Salle team. This De La Salle team has a very, very, very potent offense, and being able to make a defensive stand, I think, is going to be key for the Dragons here tonight. Definitely, Anthony. Avrilla looks corner. Rushlow, he wants a three, and that's swatted out of bounds by Janicek. Now, Jack Janicek, he is actually a commit to MSU for football. So he's playing Big Ten football next year on the Michigan State Spartans, but he's enjoying his time on the Dale Salle basketball team right now. Definitely, Anthony, and Janicek is a two-star right now, currently mm -hmm. according to 247 Sports, so it will be definitely interesting to see how his career plays out in college. And that ball bounces off the head of a pilot. Here comes Janicek, he's going to find Portis. Portis out Salaka, wants a three, pump fake, no, poked away by Quay Fly, but retained by Portis. Portis gets it to Holder. Holder, a deep three, and that's off front iron once again. Three balls coming up short here for the Pilots. Quay Fly on the fast break. He's going to take it down low. No call, and that's going to be going back down De La Salle's way. Very interesting strategy right here early by Lake Orion. We've seen that they've been trying to drive inside instead of, yeah. instead of taking those three-point shots, getting those higher percentage shots early. I mean, something you can see there from what they're trying to do is they have 
They have the ball driving down low. That's going to suck the defense down low, and that'll open up open shots from the perimeter that once they get accustomed to the game, they can start hitting those shots. So Glasner has it up top. Glasner, their big performer on Saturday. There's Portis, and Portis is going to get fouled right there, so he's going to head to the line for two. They're looked, calling a foul right there on Blake. Looked like Ryan it could have been a travel. Looked like it could have been a travel, but with the contact, I can definitely, I can definitely see what the call was. It definitely could have gone both ways there, but no free throw shots. We're going to take it out of bounds, poked away by Liddell, and it'll still be an opportunity to take it out baseline for the Pilots. Kevin Tobe set to check back in for the Dragons. He's going to take out Nate Havrilla. So Nate Havrilla gets his first blow of the contest. Pilots ball out of bounds. Gets it to Janicek. Down low, Salaka. And they're going to call a foul right there on Blake Liddell. So that is Blake Liddell's first. The last foul was on Rushlow. So Dragons with two quick fouls here to start off this contest. Salaka. He's got top of the, or middle of the key, excuse me. Now we're seeing Janicek play a lot of point guard here tonight, which is, is, is rare from the four. Usually you see him on the post setting screens while Nino Smith calls the plays, but tonight they're trying something new with Janicek. I mean, Anthony, if you are a big who can be a ball handler, that's extremely valuable in the game of yes. basketball. You look at big names like LeBron James, Giannis Antetokounmpo comes to mind. Wow, what a slam there. That's Michael Salaka with the big man's jam down low. And that just goes to show you how big of a height disadvantage Lake Orion has so far tonight. They're going to have to find creative ways to get that play back in their favor. And that's going to be a foul on Brayden Holder. So that's his first. De La Salle gets the first points of, a con of the contest. And it's poked away. Poked away by Holder. Here comes Glasner. Glasner to Holder. Trying to get Holder some of these three-point looks here, but nothing's really going. Janicek, he's going to try and drive. Cut off by Tobe. Salaka. He's down low, and it goes off the bottom of the backboard. And here comes DJ Morrow. One man fast break. Gets the rest of his teammates down. Here's Blake Liddell. What a Fancy move. move. What a move. Down low for two. What a move by the senior. Now that is how you get down low and get an easy, wide-open layup right there. Student section getting into it now for the Dragons. Janicek over to Slaka. Slaka, midi, and that's off. Rebound, Caden DeGraffenry, who just recently checked in. Here comes DJ Mora. Gets past his defender, wants to drive, finds KD in the corner. Quay Fly for three, and it's through! Quay Fly with a big three-pointer to give the Dragons an early three-point advantage. What a shot by Quay Fly. Has a defender right in his face, and he still takes the shot. Not That's guts right there. Not necessarily known as a three-point shooter either, so the confidence Lake Warren has right now is through the roof. Here are the Pilots. Salaka's got it, top of the key. Finds Janicek once again. Holder doesn't want the three. Janicek thought about driving left on Quay Fly, thought wisely. Here's Portis. Glasner's got it now. Taking their time are the Pilots. Two and 40 left to go in this first quarter. Good move by Glasner, and he's going to put it up. Float game strong right there for Glasner. And that's going to be a timeout on the floor. Now we're going to send it down to our sideline reporter, Kyle Purdy, with this report. Never mind that. Te technical difficulties there. We apologize. All right, welcome back in. First quarter here at the Fieldhouse, 5-4 Dragons. Right now we're in a timeout. Two and 34 left to go here in the quarter. Ben, what are you seeing so far uh, three quarters of the way through this contest? 
Well, Anthony, to be completely honest with you, the Dragons are getting their way, and that's just how it has been so far. The Dragons' strategy so far has been trying to drive it in and getting those easy chance points, and we've seen that so far from the Dragons. You know, the, 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 the pilots are trying to go down and trying to get these open shots, but they're not taking advantage of their open three-point shots that they have been seen. So that's something that they have to do going forward. So will be dragging the ball out of bounds as Kevin Tobe's going to take it up for the Dragons. Getting the call from his coach, setting up his O. Morrow on the wing, double teamed right now. That's Portis and Holder, and they'll poke it away, but it'll stay with the Dragons. So pesky defense from both sides so far here in this game. Aggressive pressure. Yes. Tobe, he'll be up top. Finds to Graf and Reed on the corner. He's doubled. Pump fake, no. He's going to drive it up. DJ Morrow misses the layup but creates the contact. He's going to be heading the line for two shots. DJ Morrow should be a name that we're all going to hear a lot tonight. Yes. He's produced really, really well in the past two games for the Dragons. He had 24 last time out mm -hmm. for LO against Bloomfield Hills. One of their guys that they have to go to every single time if they want to win. And the Dragons were missing DJ Morrow as he's about to take this first free throw shot. They were missing DJ Morrow for the early part of this season after an injury, wrist injury at Seaholm at the or against Seaholm at the arena and since he came back four games ago against Royal Oak he's averaging 19.5 points per game and shooting 40 percent from three in that span so DJ Morrow really filling up uh, filling up the stat sheet as he's gonna knock down the second free throw He's their main guy, Anthony. There's no doubt about that. They have a ton of guys on this Dragons basketball team but Morrow is the main name that you're gonna hear tonight. Holder for the Pilots. What a pass. He finds Glasner for the three, and that's off. And it's stolen by Kevin Tobe. Kevin Tobe, he's going to take it up, and it'll stay Dragon's ball after the deflection out of bounds. Dragon's trying to push it first in the first quarter here. Successful so far, somewhat. So Moore's going to take it out now for the Dragons. Finds Liddell. Liddell, pump fake. Close defense there, and he's going to throw it away. That's a key chain, and Glasner's got it. Glasner over to Salaka. Salaka finds the open holder, and that's going to be a charging foul call. There'll be Lake Warren basketball going back down the floor. What a play by Blake Liddell, putting his body on the line to make that play. So Janicek coming back in here, giving Salaka his first breather of the contest. Also in the contest, Adam Broski, Nemeka Akiche, Jack Janicek, Braden Holder, and Phoenix Glassman. Liddell, over to Morrow. Back to Liddell, he's gonna find it down low. That's Quay Fly, he's gonna put up no. Rebound Akiche. Here comes Glassner now with the Pilots offense. Holder. Wants a three, doesn't take it, gets it back up to Glasner, and they're going to reset. Corner, Janicek trying to drive. Pilots really favoring that left corner. And they're going to call a travel right there on that spin midi. And it'll be Lake Orion ball. So checking back in for the Pilots is Arma Armani Portis. Something important to note here, Anthony, is while you did mention, I believe, in the intro for this game, Warren De La Salle is coming off a state championship in Division One yep. last year. Yes. They beat Grand Blink last year in the state championship for Division One, 67 to 58. Now, De La Salle did also play Grand Blink earlier this year, where they lost 42 to 31. Yeah. They're in the very, very, very heated and close Catholic League, which is one of the best leagues in the entire state of Michigan. So this team has what it takes. We've clearly seen it this year. It's going to be an interesting game to see, to say the least. Here's Tome. Loses possession of the ball, and the Pilots will take it. Here's Janicek. Janicek puts it up, and he'll put it in. A layup there for Jack Janicek. And it's just a one-point advantage now with almost 20 seconds left to go here in the first. Morrow is going to find DeGraffenry. The double's looming for DeGraffenry as they're going to send a triple. Find Quay Fly, puts it up, no. Tap in Liddell, no. Another rebound, and he'll put it up and in. That's an and one opportunity right there for Quay Fly off the second.
second or third chance opportunity. What a play by Quay Fly. Sticking with the plane, sticking yes. with the ball, putting it up and not sending the ball out to reset the offense. And, and Lake Warren has some talented bigs. You know, you've got Definitely. Blake Liddell, Quay Fly, you got Ryan Rushlow, you got Sam Blakely. You've got depth at that center position. You got depth at the power forward position. And I mean, Sam Blakely is only a, a, a sophomore, junior, a junior. junior. He's only a junior, so he, they're, so they're gonna have, they're gonna have him next year. As Quay Fly is gonna put up the free throw, and it's off. Well, they're also gonna have Ryan Rushlow, who yes. we talked about previously. Yes. He's a freshman right now. He's listed at six foot five. That's one of the best players right now that Dragon Tag for the future. And Brooks is going to hit the three to end the quarter and tie it up. We're knotted at nine here at the end of one. We're now going to send it down to Kyle Purdy for our sideline report. Hey, thanks, guys. Yeah, I talked to Lake Orion's assistant coach, Khalil Malone, prior to tonight's game, and the keys are simple. Win the turnover battle, and they have to dominate the paint. Of course, at a height disadvantage tonight, that's going to be tough, but they got to create their own plays. With that, I also spoke to De La Salle's head coach, John Jokai, and his keys tonight are simple. They have to communicate on offense and defense, switch on defense, and that they're going to create open shots. Thanks, guys. Back to you. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you for that report. As we're back in here about to start the second quarter, Ben, we saw a very, very defense-heavy and pressure-heavy first quarter here from both squads. Only nine points scored in the quarter, and we're tied up here at nine. These squads are playing with each other, and Lake Warren coming as the underdog, I mean, I think everybody expected Lake Warren to be down at the end of one, but they're keeping it close. And in fact, they had the lead until that Armani Portis three ball in the corner. Definitely, Anthony, and the one word that you said that sticks out is pressure. Yes. Both teams have played with it through the first quarter, and that's going to be one of the biggest keys moving forward in this basketball game is pressure and how each team can deal with it. So as we come back here into the field house, Lake Orion has been very good at establishing their drives to the paint. Right, they've been. They no matter no matter what's being thrown at them, you're seeing double teams, triple teams, even a quadruple team there at the end of the quarter. They're they're still driving the ball down. They're trying to establish, hey, we're driving the ball to the paint, and then what that could open up, as I mentioned previously, that could open up three point shots, open three point shots for DJ, your 40% three point shooter in the last four games, and. That could, that could lead to important buckets down the stretch. Definitely, Anthony. And something that you're not mentioning that we did mention previously is yeah. the Dragons' ability to stick with the ball. Yeah. You know, they haven't kicked the ball out that much, and that's one of their re main reasons for success with offense in the first quarter. Braden Holder there with that lay-in. First points of this second quarter. And now Dale Sal runs a very tight press, and Lake Orion's been doing good at beating it. As that's a three ball, Sharkey in the corner. Ethan Sharkey just checks in and knocks down the three ball. The sharpshooter. Sharpshooter Sharkey right there in the corner. One of the most lethal players on the Dragons bench. Yes. He produced when DJ Moore was out in their game against Clarkston. Had 13 points, I think, right, Anthony? That's yes, one of the did. best players on this Dragons bench. And it goes back to what we said before. Depth is one of the best strengths for this team. And Braden Holder right there with that fadeaway midi knocks it down. Liddell, he's going to drive in, look for Quay Fly just off his hand, and it's going to stay Lake Orion basketball as it just graces the hand of Phoenix Glasner. As Kevin Tobe's going to check back in right now for Sharkey. So Sharkey gets a quick run, gets a quick three, and he hits the bench quickly. Nate Havrilla dropping back to get that pass. Havrilla over to Tobe. Gets a screen from Liddell right. Avrilla, and it's stolen by Glasner. Here comes Glasner. He's going to put it up, and he's going to put it in. That's a steal and layup right there for Phoenix Glasner. Once again, pressure, Anthony. Yes. That's what we talked about. Defense is going to be the key in this game like we have seen so far. Here comes Avrilla. He wants DJ Morrow. The Pilots right now currently in a 2-3 zone on defense. Liddell. Ball almost got away from him. Finds Havrilla for three. And it just rims out. In and out right there. Tough luck miss for Nate Havrilla. Need Jay Morrow. That's a three. That's off the heel. And rebounded. And it's on the floor. Rebounded by the Dragons and taken away by Armani Portis. But the Dragons get the ball right back. Bodies in the ball hitting the floor right now. Havrilla thought about the three. Thought about driving right. And no. He's going to reset. Gives it back to DJ Morrow at the logo. 
Nate Havrilla. He's going to try and drive right. Cut off there by Holder. Blake Liddell gets the ball stolen away by Glasner. Here comes Phoenix Glasner as he gets it poked away. And it'll stay Pilots' ball. We're seeing a lot of sloppy plays so far to start the second quarter, aren't we, Ben? Yeah, definitely. Like we said, we, we keep on saying it. I know we say it a lot, Anthony, but yeah. defense has played a key factor in this game so far. If you can't keep the ball with your, with your team, it's not looking good on the scoreboard. Here's Janicek for the Pilots. And there's going to be a foul down low. They're going to call that on Braden Holder, who's the one that hit the deck. So it's a foul on Holder. They're going to call a blocking foul right there. And the Dragons are sending Gabe Scott right now. And that's Adam Broski, who's about ready to check in for De La Salle. And that's a timeout. It's 15-12 in favor of the Warren De La Salle Pilots. This is your home for Dragon Sports. Here, here for high school multi-sport participation. Fewer overuse injuries, less opportunity for emotional burnout, exposure to different kids and coaches, exposure to different roles, and learning to compete better. Being a multi-sport participant can help a kid become a more well-rounded person. Multi-sport participation is cross-training for life. Learn more at the MHSAA website. Welcome, welcome back into the field house here in Lake Orion High School where we have a three-point advantage for the Pilots as we get, we were approaching the middle way through the second quarter and we're seeing just a lot of sloppy play right here from both squads and nobody's really taking advantage of it. No, like you, yeah, we, like you said, Anthony, we've seen a lot of sloppy play, lots of turnovers so yep. far in this game. That's one thing that both teams have to correct moving forward. Now Lake Orion keeping it close, only a three-point game right now. A couple buckets and they're right back in that lead. We're about ready to resume play after that timeout. It's a full, full minute timeout. Caden DeGraffner is going to take it out baseline for the Dragons. Inbounding it to Gabe Scott, his first run in this contest. As he crosses the timeline and gets it to Avrilla. Morrow for three, and that's off. Just short there from Morrow. Hasn't connected on a three ball yet tonight. Double team there, that's Scott into Graffinry. Dragons playing pesky defense so far. Glasner on the perimeter, finds it back to Janicek. Glasner setting up his offense now. Glasner drives. That's Portis up top now. Finds Broski, back to Portis. Student section's getting into the game here. And the ball's off Portis' foot, and Gabe Scott's gonna get on the floor, try to save it. There's Blake Liddell, as there's a whistle on the floor. They're gonna say it's Dragon Ball out of bounds. They're gonna call a kick ball. So the Dragons are still gonna have possession here, as Quay Fly checks back in for Blake Liddell. Also, Nemeka Akichi checks in for De La Salle. This is Nate Havrilla inbounding out of bounds. Havrilla to Morrow. Morrow drives, finds Havrilla in the corner. Three ball, that's off. Rebound by Broski. Over to Glasner. Here's Michael Salaka now. Broski to Glasner. Good defense again by the Dragons. Cross court pass to Janicek. Janicek trying to get past Nate Havrilla. So you're seeing a lot of the ball in the back perimeter. And there's a steal by Quayfly. Ball's on the floor, body's on the floor, and they're going to say it stays with the pilots off Nate Havrilla. So. Number 11, Armani Portis checks back into the game now for the Pilots. Here comes Glasner. Seeing a lot of loose ball opportunities for the Dragons. Akichi. Glasner 
Gets separation, puts it up, no. And they're gonna call a charge on Phoenix Glasner. Great positioning there by Caden DeGraffenry. Glasnow is one of the best team players on this team that we have seen so far and seen this entire season, Anthony. Yes. But basketball isn't his only sport. Mm -hmm. Glasnow is a three-sport athlete. He also plays baseball and football for Warren De La Salle. With that athletic ability, that's something that you love to have in your team. And it's something you're seeing a lot more now with all sports, really. You're seeing a lot of people not just sticking to one sport. You got a lot of people playing football, then going into basketball, then going right into baseball. They fall right in line with each other. So it's really perfect for these athletes that want to play multiple multiple sports and be well a well-versed athlete. Gabe Scott on the cut, and he's going to create contact and head to the line for two. Great play by the little man right there, drawing the foul as he drives into the basket. Now Gabe Scott, he is a sophomore. He is what they consider the future at point guard with Nate Havrilla being a senior. This is Nate Havrilla's last year. This is also DJ Morrow's last year. So the future at guard is at the free throw line right now as he sinks the first free throw. Gabe Scott getting ready for his next shot. It's up and he makes it. So that makes it just a one point ball game in De La Salle's favor. Dragons running their own press right now. Holder and Janicek trying to break it. Holder finally crosses the timeline, gets the ball to Janicek. Now Broski's got it. Avrilla guarding Portis at the perimeter. Holder once again calling out the play he wants. Gabe Scott guarding. Holder drives. Trying to find an open teammate. Gets Janicek. Thinks about the three, no, passes it into Akiche, and it's poked away, and it's stolen by the Dragons. Nate Havrilla running the fast break, gets it to Scott, and they're gonna slow it down, set up their offense. Havrilla, back tomorrow. You're seeing a lot of double teams now from De La Salle. Morrow puts up the midi, and Oh my three. God, what, what a, a play. Shot. What a shot there from DJ Morrow. With a hand in his face. Janicek. Closely guarded by Quay Fly, a little too close, and they're gonna call the foul right there on Quay. Well, Anthony, you obviously wanna be aggressive when you're playing yeah. defense in the game of basketball, but sometimes players can be too aggressive, and that's what bites them in the end. Yep. So Michael Slaka coming back in. Phoenix Glasner back in. Pilots ball, sideline out. Armani Portis, Nate Havrilla guarding closely. Trying to go, takes it down and he puts up the layup. Questionable no call right there as he uses elbow to create separation. Blake Liddell over to Gabe Scott, finds an open Morrow, he puts it up, Ooh, oh he my puts God. it through. So DJ Morrow, Getting it going at the rim now. What a pass by the sophomore. Two minutes left to go here in the second quarter. 18-17 in the Dragons' favor. Holder. Holder out. This is Armani Portis. Student section getting loud. We got a whistle on the floor. Stoppage of play. There's a foul on Kanan DeGraffenry. So Portis will take it out out of bounds now. Portis finds Glasner and a foul on DJ Morrow. So fouls starting to pile up now for the Dragons. A couple straight fouls on this possession. The Pilots, Anthony, also have 18 fouls. 18 yes. fouls to the Dragons, five. Here's Holder, passing it into Salaka. Salaka to Holder. Finds Phoenix Glass, and he's gonna take it up. He's gonna put it in, and that's a foul. He's talking to the student section, and he gets the and one opportunity now with the charity strike. Glass now, a name that we're hearing again and again tonight as he's their main man. Especially with Nino Smith not playing. Nino Smith, usually their ball handler, their main dribble driver, their main three-point shooter next to Holder. It's Ryan Rushlow checking back in for the Dragons. Giving Quay Fly a breather. 
One shot here for Phoenix Glasner. And the crowd got to him there, as you can hear that crowd. Lake Orion bringing out once again a beautiful student section. Scott over to Rushlow in the corner. He's double teamed in the corner. And they're going to get a timeout there by the Dragons. Dragons take timeout. Down by one with a minute and 29 left to go. This is your home for Dragon Sports. Orion Neighborhood Television is hosting its 13th annual food drive benefiting the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. This year's virtual food drive kicks off on Monday, February 6th and runs through Friday the 10th. ONTV will be broadcasting live from noon until 2 p.m. and 7 until 9 p.m. during the week. You can tune in to watch on Comcast Channel 10, AT&T U-verse 99, Roku, ONTV's Facebook page, or visit orionontv.org. Help us reach our goal of $5,000 by contributing to our GoFundMe page drive. 100% of the funds raised will go directly to the fish food pantry to help those in need. For more information, give us a call at 248-393-1060 or visit ONT orionontv.org. What a great cause that is right there. One of the best. It'll be Dragon's Ball out of bounds, DJ Morrow. DJ Morrow's gonna take it out. Caden to Graffenried in the corner. Kane's gonna drive. He'll put up the floater and it just rims out. Tough luck miss there. As Rushlow tries to throw it off of Slocka's leg, but Slocka catches it. It'll be Pilot's Ball. Approaching a minute left to go in the first half. Holder to Akiche. Portis. Finds Glasner. Glasner driving right. He'll put up the lay-in, and that's just off. Ball batted around, and it's taken in by Akiche. To Portis, who finds Holder in the corner. Holder drives baseline, finds Akiche. Ball's going everywhere, and that's out of bounds. It'll be late for him possession. An error by Glasnow there that gives the Dragons the ball and potentially the last shot of the quarter. 47 seconds left. Just listen to that student section right here. I believe they're chanting Butterfingers, Anthony. <laughs> it's a funny one. Gabe Scott now for the Dragons, trying to take advantage of a couple De La Salle miscues. Ball batted around into Havrilla's hands. So we'll get it back to Gabe Scott. Scott to DeGraffenry. DeGraffenry driving, and they're going to call blocking foul right there. That's on Nemeka Hikichi. And we previously mentioned Kaden DeGraffenry as one of the bigs of this Dragons basketball team. Mm -hmm. But something that you guys may not know is that he's also a football player here at the high school. Yes, he is. One of the best players on this football team for Lake Orion. He's only a junior, so he can still progress and play better next year in his senior season. Something that the football coaches and the basketball coaches have to be looking forward to. Salaka taking advantage of his size on that rebound over Rushlow. The 6'9", Michael Salaka. That is no height to joke around about in high school hoops. Here comes Glasner, setting up his offense, likely the final possession of this first half. Broski, over to Portis. Portis, cross-court pass to Janicek. Broski in the corner, that's off the heel, rebounded by Salaka. Salaka will put it up and there'll be a whistle and a foul. That's on the Dragons, Blake Liddell. Michael Salaka to the line now for the Pilots. Trying to extend this lead past one to possibly two, possibly three. First shot on the way. And that's off. So first shot off for Salaka. Loading up for the second one now. Student section into it. And he's off on the second free throw. Batted around to Rushlow, and that's going to end the first half. 19 to 18, De La Salle holding a one point advantage over the Lake Orion Dragons. We'll be right back after this. This is your home for Dragon Sports. I don't think anybody would care if I just stopped coming to school.
None of the things that used to bring me joy bring me joy anymore. Sometimes I wish I could just disappear. I wish I had somebody just to talk to. My mental health matters. 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 Our mental health matters. We're there to serve, make sure we're creating a fair atmosphere for both teams, upholding the integrity of the game. I chose to be an official. It's the best decision I've made. In life, things aren't scripted. Games aren't pre-scripted. You know, I got into officiating because my father was an official. Officiating was part of our family life. It wasn't just the game. You get to be outside, you get to like experience the game. It's so much more fun. You can get a lot out of it. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiating. It helped me become not only a better official, but a better person. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. And it's just been wonderful. As the voice of Michigan Student Athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere in which interscholastic students can thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stand should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports. It's while maintaining a high level of respect for all those involved in the games. It's it's really really good. Good. Start in Marquette with the eight player Division I finals. It was Adrian Lenaway Christian 31, Sutton's Bay 20. Some schools go shorter, most off of the 100. Bryja again sets the pile to the right. Did he get through? He's near the goal line. Touchdown. And a pitch. Ayers got the corner. He's in. Touchdown. Lenaway Christian. And that might just be enough. 31-20, Lenaway Christian gets the win here in Marquette. And in the eight-player division, two, Powers North Central, 63, colon zero. Look for 11, he'll come in motion again back towards the formation. And again, the snap is to one of the up men, and rab has got the corner, he's got the sideline, he's got the pylon, touchdown North Central. Swing pass here, and Mazur got a block up the near sideline. He had popped again, didn't go out of bounds, and he's going to head to the end zone. Final here from Marquette. North Central 63. The colon Magi nothing. Moving to Ford Field and the 11 player finals. In Division I, it was Belleville 55, Rochester Adams 33. He will go to the air, down the right sideline, and it is caught in strike. And a beautiful throw, touchdown Belleville, quick strike capability. Steps into another one, wide open, middle of the field. Man a man miss, still on his feet, shaking his way, Caldwell to the end zone, his third of the day. Belleville makes history in 2021, they've won it all and earn the Division One state crown. In Division Two, Warren De La Salle, 41, Traverse City Central, 14. Joe Dosh, caught, Tristan Nichols, goodbye. 
Brady Drogosh is on the Hoops team, too. He runs left, gains the first down, and a lot more. Brady Drogosh is going to win a foot race every single time. For the fourth time in the last eight seasons, the Pilots are state champs. In Division Three, Detroit Martin Luther King, 25, DeWitt, 21. Dante Moore deep down the sidelines and intercepted by Holtz. He's got running room. He's got blockers. He's heading to the end zone. Touchdown to win. And there you go. Give is to Sterling Anderson for the touchdown. And the Crusaders of Detroit, Martin Luther King, have won the Division Three State Championship in 2021. In Division Four, Chelsea 55, Hudsonville Unity Christian 52. Off play action. Chandler broke the tackle. Look out. Has a seam. They're not going to get him. Another touchdown run for Cam Chandler. Four of them to Lucas Hannafin. Looks his way again. Steps into a throw. Caught! Hannafin! What a game! Good snap. It's up. History for Chelsea! In Division 5, Grand Rapids, Catholic Central, 31, Marine City, 7. Amanda Watts is still on the near side of your screen, number 24, Nolan Ziegler, the favorite target. He's going to get the ball here, near midfield, a lot of room to run. Got a block downfield on the far sideline, racing to the end zone. Touchdown, Catholic Central. Ziegler's down at the bottom of your screen, number 24. Looking for him, lob in the end zone, caught. Touchdown. Incredibly, a fifth state title in the last six seasons. In Division 6, Lansing Catholic 16, Warren Michigan Collegiate 6. Baker rolling right, has a man. Touchdown. Owen Bergens. Baker's been running the ball very effectively. He's got a big hole and a touchdown. And Lansing Catholic wins the Division VI State Championship. In Division Seven, Powamo, Westphalia 14, Lawton 10. A lot of room out here to the bottom. A lot of cushion. Two by two, a puck fake. He's got a man. He's wide open. Inside the 15. Touchdown, Luke Layton. First down, Ronnie Moore. He won't. Touchdown, Powamo, Westphalia. And now Powamo, Westphalia will be crowned Division 7 champions of 2021. In Division 8, Hudson 14, Beale City 7. Rolls, loads, throws deep, and he's got a guy wide open. Carter Fussman, touchdown. Arredondo gives one for a touchdown. We'll see you just after Thanksgiving again this year. The finals are Friday and Saturday, November 25th and 26th from Ford Field in Detroit. Welcome back to the Fieldhouse of Lake Orion High School where the pilots are up by one point, 19 to 18 over the Lake Orion Dragons. Right now, we're going to send it down to our sideline reporter, Kyle Purdy, who's standing by with assistant coach Malone. Kyle? Hey guys, I'm here with Coach Khalil Malone. Um, just came out of the tunnel uh, going into the third quarter. Coach, what was talked about in the in the uh, locker room and how are you going to apply that to the third quarter? So basically what we talked about is limiting our turnovers. Right now they're getting out on fast breaks and just making sure that we can have good ball control and then handle the pressure. That's one, one thing that we need to do. Um, and if we can keep that going and we're playing fine, we're only down one. We can keep doing that. I think we can uh, end up winning tonight. And of course, with the height disadvantage, you're at a little bit of one here. How have you, how have you uh, been able to contain Michael Salaka throughout the first half? Well, we play great defense anyway. So, well, all we do is just to stay to our truth to our principles, and we just handle the rest on it and on our rebounds. So, all right, coach. Thank you. No that was Coach Cleo Malone. Back to you guys upstairs.
Thank you, Kyle, as we're about ready to start this second half. I mean, the one thing Coach Malone brought up was the pressure. And we, we alluded to it very much in that first half. It's the pressure that the Dragons and the Pilots are both bringing on defense. Pilots start with the ball out of the break. This is Braden Hold over to Armani Portis. And it's poked away by Quay Fly. Nay Havrilla leading the fast break opportunity. Poked away, and they're going to call a double dribble on Havrilla. So it'll be Pilots ball going the other way. Well, you know what they say, Anthony. Defense wins championships. We've seen that right now. Pressure is huge in this game, and the turnover differential is going to be one of the biggest factors of who's going to win tonight. As Glasner's got it now. Glasner puts it up and in. So Glasner gets, gets it going now for the Pilots. Three ball, Havrilla, and that's off. Rebound by Glasner. Glasner's got it now. Taking the ball up. Setting up his offense, wants a screen left from Salaka. Yanichek. Deep three, and that's off. Short by Glasner, but a rebound by Portis. Great rebound there, off the long miss, off the front iron by Portis. Portis drives, Portis puts it up, no. A lot of shots falling short, and they're gonna call a foul right there on the second chance put back opportunity. And that foul is gonna be on Blake Liddell. That's his third now out of five, so Blake Liddell in a bit of foul trouble. Here, they gotta be careful with that, but they do have the depth that big in case they need to take Blake out to preserve him for later minutes in this contest. Definitely, Anthony. That's Portis at the line. And that's again off the front of the rim. Lots of shots falling short all throughout this game here for De La Salle as the Dragons send to Graf and Reed and Scott back into this one. A lot of free throw misses so far this game from both sides. It's one of the key elements of basketball. If you get a free shot, you have to make it. And the second one good right there from Portis. DeGraffenry now being pressured by Holder to Havrilla. Havrilla, stop. And he's going to pass over to DeGraffenry. DeGraffenry trying to drive in, finds Fly. Trying to bump him, puts it up. No. Rebound. Quay Flies are going to go to the ground, and they're going to call a foul right there. And that's a foul on number 33. That's Michael Slocka. Leghorn student section likes that call a lot. Getting hyped in the game so far. And the student section's brought major advantages for the Dragons. They've had a great student section all year. And home court advantage is real in the field house for the Dragons. And that's to be poked away by Portis. Taken by Holder, and now Glasner's got it. Glasner to Holder. Back to, back to Glasner. Janicek going to put it up. Oh, and the lay-in right there. That's Jack Janicek with another two chalked up for the Pilots. Gabe Scott now trying to break the, the press. Nate Havrilla driving. Corner feed, DJ Morrow driving in. Finds fly. He puts it up. He puts it in. That's seven points on the night, leading all Dragon scorers. And Quay Fly brings this disadvantage in the point column down to four. 24-20 in favor of the Pilots. Salaka perimeter. Finds Portis. Portis over to Holder. Holder going to drive baseline. Finds Glasner. Corner pocket three. And that's short once again. Michael Salaka with the offensive rebound. Finds Holder. Wing three. And that's off once more. And the Dragons will let that go out of bounds. And it'll be their ball going back down the other way. So the Dragons getting out-rebounded a lot, but that's not really affecting what they're doing on defense. They're still, they're still boxing out. They're still getting down low. They're still getting dirty with it. But the height disadvantage is real right now for the Dragons. To Graffenry, to Havrilla, over to Scott. Scott back to Havrilla. Havrilla finds Scott once again. And it'll be poked out of bounds, and it'll stay Dragon's possession off the hands of Armani Portis. Quay Fly going to take it out 
sideline out for the Dragons. DJ Morrow comes to the ball. Close pressure right there from Holder. Morrow is going to drive, hop, step, pass to the corner to Havrilla. He's double teamed. They get a hand in there. They're going to call a jump ball. Possession arrow stays with the Dragons. So Dragons are going to take the ball out of bounds once again. Sideline out. Quay Fly has the honors of taking that ball out. And Akichi is going to check back in, giving Salaka a breather. Well, Anthony, we talked about this earlier. The Dragons' last game, they played Bloomfield Hills last Friday, and they lost in a close battle, 56-55. to That's a one-point differential, like the one against Clarkston. That was a three-point game. But still, at the same time, both these games had two crucial plays at the end. Of it. And the problem with the, that the Dragons had in both those games, poor play execution. Heck, we might not know if the play call was right or a good one, but the problem was the play execution. And we've seen with a close game right now, Dragons have to take every single possession seriously. Yes. It could come down to the wire again. And the Dragons just need to focus on their play execution, as you alluded to. And they could come out of here with a W. Holder now up top, Logo, poked away by Habrilla. Habrilla steals it, retained by Quay Fly. This is Kevin Tobe on the break, and he's swatted away by Michael Salaka. Here comes Armani Portis. Portis running a fast break, three on two, corner three, Holder, and it's through. And that's a timeout right there on the floor. And we're gonna send it to timeout. 27-20, the Pilots lead the Dragons, third quarter. Thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch LOHS Sports live online all year long. We've got a full schedule of varsity basketball, hockey, and more this winter, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $11 per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the LOHS program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. Get started at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. ON TV thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication to bringing Dragon Sports to the world. Back at the field house here, coming out of a timeout, seven point disadvantage for the Dragons. But it doesn't feel like that. It feels like it's much closer to a seven point disadvantage. They did just hit that three, Holder hit that three on the wing. The Dragons now need to find a way to respond. They need to find a way to respond and quick because they can't let this thing get out of hand. These are the former state champions we're talking about that they're going up against. If they let this thing get out of hand, it might be too far or too little, too late. Definitely, Anthony. The Dragons, this possession right here is the most important possession for them so far this game. They have to get a bucket down. Here comes Tobe. Tobe doubled. Tries to find a Grafner in and it's stolen by Glasner. Glasner up to Holder. He's going to lay it up and he's going to lay it in. Another fast break hoop for the Pilots. Here comes Tobe trying to break this press. The Grafenry, he's going to cross the timeline just in time as he's doubled, trying to take the ball away. Corner pocket three, Kevin Tobe, and that's off. Rebounded by Fly, he'll put it up, he'll put it in. Quay Fly with his ninth bucket here tonight. Ninth point here tonight. Pass over to Salaka, almost stolen away. Portis, three ball, and that's off. Rebound Quay Fly. Here comes Nate Havrilla now. Nate Havrilla finds Kevin Tobe in the corner. Kevin drives, drives baseline, that's off. Rebound again by Quay Fly, and another layup just off at, at the rim. As Portis is gonna take the ball up now, finding Glasner. Glasner's got it up top. Havrilla guarding closely. Michael Salaka over to Holder. Holder look, trying to look down low. And Nate Havrilla taps it out of bounds. Not the wise decision there. Should have just let that one fly out of bounds. But nonetheless, it's staying Pilots ball. As big substitutions here for the Dragons, Liddell, Rushlow, and Scott all checking in now. As the Pilots are going to take it out baseline. Holder. Looking down low, and it's taken away by Scott. One-on-one -on -one fast break opportunity. Scott's going to put it up. Rejected by Broski. Here comes Janicek. Janicek finds Holder. Holder's going to set up his offense. And Havrilla guarding quite closely. 
Blake Liddell guarding Salaka, who passes it to Portis. Portis with P.J. Morrow guarding. Great defensive pressure here from the Dragons. Broski's got it, wing. Back to Holder. Holder finds Salaka. Salaka wants to drive baseline, cut off by Liddell. Back out to Broski. Broski finding, trying to find an open man. He gets Holder. Holder to Yenicek. Yenicek, Holder. Holder drives, and they're going to call a foul right there on the floor. And that is on Nate Havrilla. So that's his first foul of the contest. So Nate Havrilla has been very clean of fouls. Still, still looking to hit the scorebook here tonight. Salaka in the corner. Finds Broski. Broski's got it with DJ Morrow guarding tight. Corner to Holder. Holder brings the ball out, finds Janicek, and they're going to reset with Holder. Finding another play now. Sending men in motion. Salaka with the screen right. Finds Janicek. Janicek tries to drive left. Cut off by Rushlow. Janicek resets. Tries to drive again. No. Finds Broski. Broski tries to drive it in, and it's off his foot and stolen by Morrow. Morrow then throws it to Portis. And they're going to call a foul right there on DJ Morrow. So the ball has been everywhere tonight. The ball, both teams very sloppy with the ball, not taking care of it well. And you haven't really seen either team take advantage the way they should be right now. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think what we're alluding to, Anthony, is that we have been talking about defense all night and yeah. how the offense has been subpar. But honestly, I think we can't look at the offense here as being subpar or not as good as it should be. I think we have sure. to give props to the defense of how yeah. well and how good it is for both these squads. Both these offenses have been on fire as of late. Portis for three, and that's off the front iron. Bounces away. Another second chance opportunity, an offensive rebound for Salaka. Glasner up top. Glasner their main man on Saturday. And that tough loss to Grand Rapids Christian. And the ball will be going back down to Lake Orion. How's it going to call a push off on Broski? They're going to send Sharky back in, the Dragons are, for Gabe Scott. Gabe Scott's, Gabe Scott's going to get a breather. Sharky's going to take it out of bounds. Baseline now. Again, here's this press that Dale Sal is known for. They're known for their press. As it works there, Steele, Portis is going to put it up. He's going to, oh, it just rims out. Unlucky bounce there, but he gets two shots at the line to try and get those points right back. Fouls on Sharkey. Well, Anthony, you know, De La Salle's coach, John Jokey, was the AP coach of the year last year in Michigan Division I. That said something about the program that De La Salle has right now for basketball. It's yeah, one of the best in the state. Wonderfully coached team. They have wonderful talent over there, and there's no surprise why they won the state championship last year. Both teams reloading with substitutions. Second shot there is off. And they're going to call foul right there on Phoenix Glasner. Glasner. It's Caden DeGraffner. He's going to take the ball baseline now after the foul. Dragons try to break this press again. Holder's guarding closely. Got to get that ball across the timeline. Morrow does. Morrow now double teamed at the top. Play five finds Liddell. Liddell drives. And they're going to call a travel. And the student section doesn't agree with that call right there. Questionable call from the refs. Not really agreed right now in the field house at Lake Orion. I mean, you, it could have gone, it could have been a foul on De La Salle, and it could have been a travel on, on Blake Liddell. It just depends on where the whistle's going. And clearly the whistle's going in favor of De La Salle. As Sam Blakely is going to check in now for the Dragons. Here comes Holder, setting up his offense, crossing the timeline. Sharkey guarding closely. Salaka. 
Salaka backs down on Blakely. Portis trying to work on Quay Fly. Mid-range jumper Salaka, that's off the heel and rebounded by Sharkey, poked out of bounds, and it'll be Lake Orion Ball going back down the other way. So three seconds left to go here in the third quarter. So Adam Broski is coming in now for De La Salle. We recently talked about De La Salle's head coach, John Jokey, and we're gonna talk, ooh. Oh, and it almost hits at the end of three. Close. That's the end of quarter number three. The Dragons down 29-22 to the Pilots. We're going to send it down now to Kyle Purdy with our another sideline report. Kyle? Guys, I think the story tonight has definitely been defense. You know, 29-22, of course, in favor of De La Salle. But coming off of last week, Ligorian lost in a riveting game to Bloomfield, 56-55. 56 points in a high school game, that's... Let's just say it's a lot. 29 points tonight. Defense wins championships. Let's see if Lake Orion can bring it back in and win this game. Thanks, guys. Back to you. Thanks, Kyle. Defense, like he kept alluding to, defense is the key tonight. Both teams playing great defense. Just De La Salle taking advantage of Dragon miscues more. The, Dragon, the Dragons are taking advantage of De La Salle miscues. Definitely, Anthony. We talked earlier about the, tur the turnover differential playing a huge part in this game. Lake Orion has more turnovers right now than De La Salle. Yeah. And we've seen De La Salle, the, their, their ability to go on the fast break, mm -hmm. their ability to get easy points. And honestly, one of the more underrated stats, they've gotten a ton of second chance points with their offensive rebounds tonight. Yes. So they've been playing really, well, really, really well in the paint and at the rim. And that's one of their biggest keys to their success right now against Lake Orion. Their height advantage is also big. You can see it on the offensive boards. They're missing short, and those long rebounds are going to the to Michael Slaka, 6'9 over Blake Liddell, who is 6'5. 6'6, six, six, excuse me. Blake Liddell 6'6. Six, six. So there is a disadvantage right there. They're utilizing their 6'9. They're 6'9", Michael Slaka. They're 6'7", Nameka Akichi. They're utilizing their size, and that's really big on the offensive boards because that's leading to these offensive second-chance points, and that's what's really killing the Dragons right now. As De La Salle about ready to take the ball out of bounds, start of the fourth quarter here at the field house. Thanks for joining us tonight. Anthony Schulte, Ben Shadle on the call with you. Salaka, he'll put it up, and he'll put it in. That's another and-one opportunity for De La Salle. Now, Anthony, we previously talked in this game about De La Salle's head coach, John Jokey, how he was the AP coach of the year last year yes. for De La Salle. For Ligorian, you have a man, Jose Andrades, who was previously before this an assistant coach under former head coach Joel Schroeder, mm -hmm. and before that was the head coach at Birmingham Seahome. Well, he had a really, really good record. He had a total record of 100, 104 and 69. That's really, really special for a team and for Coach Andrades to have as a head coach in his career at Seahome. So that's a foul on De La Salle. It'll be Dragon Ball out of bounds. Almost another turnover there for the Dragons. DJ Morrow breaking the press quickly, gets it to Liddell. Liddell finds Shark in the corner. Three, and it's through! Threads it through the nylon for three! And that's gonna, that hopefully will start the comeback here for the Dragons. Don't call the comeback, Anthony. It's brewing right now, 32-25. All they need is one shot to get it going. Almost stolen by Fly. Janacek, mid-range jumper, and it's through. Moro, off the inbound from DeGraffenried. DeGraffenried breaks the press. Double team now up top. Poked away by Portis. Portis will take the ball. He's going to put it up and blocked by DeGraffenried. He'll save it, and they're going to call a foul right there on Michael Salaka. Now, Michael Salaka is the tallest player on this De La Style team, standing at an astounding six foot nine. Anthony, yeah. can you yeah. imagine guarding someone that tall? No, I couldn't. I can't. I couldn't. As That's insane. As Lake Orion's tallest player, it's Blake Liddell, a senior who's standing at six foot six. Yes. Six foot nine? Are you kidding me? The aforementioned Slaka just taken out by the six foot seven Akichi. So Nemeka Akichi, he comes in and it's like you can't get a break. It's always someone that's going to be taller than you, and it's just how are you going to deal with that disadvantage right there? As they're going to call foul right there on Brovsky, Adam Brovsky. 
That's his third foul. Reminder, five fouls and you're out in high school basketball. Quay fly inbounding. He's going to find Morrow past the timeline. Morrow drives, finds Quay fly in the corner. Pump fake drive. Double teamed, loses control of the ball. Poked away by Portis, and DeGraffner is going to put it up, and he's rejected by Akichi. Here comes Holder on the fast break to Portis. Bench wanted a three. Portis brings it back out to Holder. And the Pilots are going to reset and be patient with their offense. No need to rush if you're the Pilots. Holder, he's going to drive. Fimbrowski in the corner. Back out to Portis. And they're going to call a blocking foul right there against Caden DeGraffenry. That's six team fouls from both teams right here in the second half, Anthony. Now seven team fouls for LaCourne, so it'll be a bonus one and one opportunity for Jack Janicek. Again, the Michigan State commit for football, another multi-sport athlete. And that's gonna be up and through, so he'll get another one, another opportunity at the line, one and one. Janicek. He puts it up and through again. So Dragons having a little bit of trouble breaking this press. They've had a couple miscues trying to break it, as they will do so successfully here. DeGraffenry trying to drive. The ball's been loose for Lake Orion. They're going to call a jump ball, and it'll be Lake Orion's possession. The ball's been loose. Whenever they're putting the ball on the floor, the ball just seems to be popping out. You know, they're not, they're not keeping control of that ball. And sometimes they'll regain possession. Sometimes they'll get a jump ball like they just did. But sometimes that turns into turnovers, and honestly, that's what's created this deficit as there's another turnover right there. Holder up to Portis. Pilots trying to, trying to take advantage of another Lake Orion miscue. Broski now on the wing. Finds Janicek. Over to Holder. Nehavrilla getting set to check in for the Dragons. Akichi, midi, and it's through. Bounces off the rim, and Akichi gets one to go. And that's going to be a timeout for Lake Orion. 38-25. The deficit blooms to 13, and the Pilots are up top. Orion Neighborhood Television is hosting its 13th annual food drive benefiting the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. This year's virtual food drive kicks off on Monday, February 6th and runs through Friday the 10th. ON TV will be broadcasting live from noon until 2 p.m. and 7 until 9 p.m. during the week. You can tune in to watch on Comcast Channel 10, AT&T U-verse 99, Roku, ON TV's Facebook page, or visit orionontv.org. Help us reach our goal of $5,000 by contributing to our GoFundMe page drive. 100% of the funds raised will go directly to the fish food pantry to help those in need. For more information, give us a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orientontv.org. Make sure to contribute if you can. A great cause right there, the, food drive, the fish food drive, ONT fish food drive. We're we've, done, we've done it multiple years at the high school, yes, and have. it's one of the best food drives that we have. Yes, it is. One of the most consistent ones that students can participate in very, very easily. And it's a great cause as well. So it'll be Lake Orion ball out of bounds. Five and 40 left to go here in this ball game. Lake Orion trying to cut the deficit from 13 down to possibly 11, possibly 10. It all starts with taking care of that basketball. Moro to Havrilla. Moro drives left, hop step pass for, to the perimeter for Havrilla. Quay fly, contested three for Moro, and it's through! Count it! That's a three pointer and one opportunity right there for DJ Moro. Wow. What a shot by the senior. We told you that we would hear his name tonight. He has been a little bit quiet so far. But that's the best shot that we've seen from any team this night. What a shot. I mean, with, he got tackled like they were playing football out there, and he knocks knocks it down, nothing but net. What a sweet shot from DJ Morrow right there. That's beautiful basketball. And the student section is now getting back into the game. And that's what you need. And Morrow, it just rims out. Unlucky bounce there, down and out. And Glasner is going to get it going for the Pilots. 
And they're going to call a foul on Moro. Once again, a little bit too aggressive for the Dragons defense right there. Of course, you want to be aggressive when you're playing defense, but not too aggressive like we saw there. So that's his third. They got to worry about fouls now. So it's Glasner now at the line for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. And the first one goes. So they get one more at the charity stripe. Here's Phoenix Glasner. And that's off the heel and rebounded by Sharkey. Pavrilla's getting it going now for the Dragons. DJ Morrow finds Havrilla on the perimeter, double team, gets it back to Morrow. Morrow to Havrilla. Back to Morrow. Morrow drives, puts up the underhand layup, and it's off, but it's rebounded and tapped in by Blake Liddell. The Dragons still have time to make this a game. They still have time. This game is far from over. Holder to Salaka. Back out to Janicek, and that's out of bounds, and it'll be Lake Orion ball going back down the other way. Let's see if Lake Orion can take advantage of one of De La Salle's miscues now. Here comes Neha Brilla. Over to Moro. Glasner, Glasner sending the double team. They're going to call a foul right there on Armani Portis. So you see when the ball crosses the timeline, you see when the Dragons get the ball to one of their players on the wing, they Im the Pilots immediately send a double team. And that double team has been really disrupting the Dragons as DJ Morrow's heading to the line for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. And the free throw rims out. In and out once again for Morrow. Second straight free throw to go down through the cylinder and then pop up. Yenicek finds Portis, or excuse me, Glasna. Glasner over to Holder. This is Portis now. Back to Glasner. This place is loud, folks. Glasner driving baseline. He's going to put it up. And it's just off the heel. Couldn't bounce around and through. And they're going to call foul right there on number 11, Armani Portis. That's another foul for the Pilots that's going to send Blake Liddell to the line. Their ninth team foul this half. We are sorry for whatever they may be saying in the student section. Couldn't quite hear what they were saying. So Liddell is gonna be is gonna send it to the line. And that's gonna be down and through for Bladell. He's gonna hit the first of a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Bladell. And that's off the heel and almost rebounded by Fly. It's being tapped out. And they're going to say it's De La Salle basketball. This gym does not agree with that call right there. I don't blame him, Anthony. And it's now Holder right here for the Pilots. Holder gets it across the timeline over to Glasner. Glasner to Janicek. Back out Holder. Holder wants to get it down low to Salaka, can't. Finds Phoenix. As they were chanting, we want Phoenix, and that's why they're so excited to see Phoenix with the basketball. The sophomore has it up top. They're excited for Phoenix here in the field house as he puts up a shot, airborne, rebounded by Liddell. Liddell leading the fast break. Liddell, and it's through, count that baby in a foul! Liddell absorbs the contact, puts up the layup, and it's in. And this game is down to a six-point lead for the Pilots. What a play by Blake Liddell going on the fast break, staying with his layup and staying with his form after he got clocked in the face. Absorbing that contact, taking it in, and then focusing on making your layup. Liddell at the line, split the pair last time. And that's off the heel, and it'll bounce around and through. And one opportunity is taken advantage of. Janicek into Holder. Holder. This student section is alive and well, folks. Here's Holder driving. 
Trying to look out. He wants Portis. Portis. They're going to call a foul on the floor before the shot. That'll be a foul. Foul on Havrilla. So they're going to call the foul on Havrilla, not Portis, even though Portis did extend his arm. And Portis will get a one and one opportunity here at the strike. Important free throws if you're a De La Salle fan. These are big free throws, Anthony. It's a one and one If you make this free throw, you extend your lead to six. If you make both, you extend it to a three-position game, which is huge and incredibly valuable at this time in this game. And he makes the first. So the Dragon Faithful, we're not looking for that, out for that outcome. Portis going to try and make it a three-possession game, a valuable three-possession game. And he knocks it down. So Dragon's going to take the ball up now. Three and change left to go here in the fourth. They're going to let the ball roll up. Clock started when Nate Havrilla picked up the ball when it crossed the timeline. DJ Morrow. And it's going to be stolen by Glasner. Read that thing pure perfectly, and he's going to put it up. He'll put it in. And a steal and lay-in for Phoenix Glasner. A clutch hoop right there, approaching 2 and 50 left to go. Havrilla trying to respond off the turnover. Moro, three ball, that's off the heel. Rebounded by Havrilla. Havrilla will put it up, and it'll bounce around. Doesn't get the friendly roll, and it'll be retained by DJ Moro. So it's two offensive rebounds this possession. Something the Dragons have not had so far tonight. Sharkey finds Liddell. Liddell, pump fake, gonna drive. He'll put it up. He'll put it in! Another in one opportunity for Blake Liddell, and he's gonna go to the line to try and make it a six point game. Another play by Blake Liddell as he sticks with that layup on his right hand again. So here comes Liddell, trying to finally knock one down. He puts it up, and that's off the heel. They're going to call a foul here on Quay Fly, and it's going to go down. This is going to be free throws now. Now, this is when the bonus gets tricky, because usually that's a foul on the floor. They'll take the ball out of bounds. It'll be like, like just a normal dead ball. Now they get free throws. That is, ten, that is nine fouls on the Dragons. So Salaka will be at the line shooting two shots. Anthony, that's 19 total fouls in the second half. Yeah. That's insane to think about. It's been a very physical and defensive contest. And Salaka will drain the first as Akichi is about ready to check in. He's checking in for the shooter, so Salaka will be getting a breather after this. Second free throw on the way. And it's good. So we'll send in Akichi. Salaka's going to hit the bench, and the Dragons are going to try and respond here. Down by nine. Time is of the essence here. Is he going to let the ball roll out? Holder tried to take advantage of the ball on the ground. Havrilla picks it up quickly, gets it to Moro, who gets it back to Havrilla. Havrilla over to Sharkey. Sharkey to Havrilla. They tr Glasner tried to steal it once more, couldn't. Moro, midi, that's off. Rebounded by Janicek. Almost stolen there by Quay Fly, but it gets to Holder. Two and change left to go here in the fourth. Time's running out as it's poked away by Nate Havrilla. Here comes Nate Havrilla. He'll put it up, and he'll put it in. And a timeout on the floor. Nate Havrilla gets one to go. And let's let's keep it here. Let's let's talk about this contest so far. Because you have with just under two minutes left to go, it's a seven-point contest here. And you're seeing Lake Orion, they're getting careless with the ball, right? Sloppy turnovers. Again, Glasner's running over and he's stealing those balls. And you know. You can't do anything about it when you're so fast and running, and you just make a simple pass and it's stolen. But you've got to be able to respond. And when Lake Warren does respond, either they don't miss, the, they don't make the free throw, the free throw rims out, they take a contested shot because they need to get something up. So De La Salle, their experience and their experience in the clutch is really coming up big here down the stretch. Definitely, Anthony. You know, we've seen. 19 fouls, like we said, 19 mm -hmm. fouls. How many of those free throws have been made by Lake Orion? Two or three. That's the big problem. Yeah. That's a huge problem. Yeah. When you have free throws and free shots at the line, you have to be able to convert. It's one of the biggest problems in modern day basketball. Yes. So out of the timeout, it'll be De La Salle ball. We're taking it out baseline, opposite of their basket. 
Student section's still alive. It's only a seven point contest here with a minute and 58 left to go. Glasner is going to find Yanacek. Gets it back to Glasner, and here come the pilots. Crossing half court, DJ Morrow guarding closely, and the ball's kicked away, and they're going to say that's an over and back. Not off of, off of DJ Morrow, it's off of Glasner's foot, and that's an over the bat and back call. It's Lake Orion ball. This is a big possession here for Lake Orion, isn't it, Ben? They have to make a great shot here. They have to take a high percentage shot. Whether it's a three ball with their best player that they want it to be, or a two ball to get it inside and down low with one of their bigs, they have to take a shot and they have to make it here. Well, the 6'9 Slaka is out, been replaced by the 6'7 Akichi. Play fly, has a perimeter. Makes a man jump, gets it to Liddell, and Liddell swatted away by Akichi. Here comes Portis. And Portis gonna take it out, and he's gonna reset out to Yanichik. To Portis. Close defense, it is stolen away by Fly. Here comes Quay Fly. He'll put it up, he'll put it in. It's just a five point game now, folks. Huge steal right there by Quay Fly. Here comes Glasner. The Dragons don't have to pressure here. It's a two-possession game. West is going to put it up, and it's out of bounds. It's going down Lake way off the hands of Phoenix Glasner. Lake Orion getting a couple great breaks right here. Let's see if they can take advantage. They have to, Anthony. They have to. The student section's in it. The crowd's in it. This is a wild electric finish, one of the best finishes that we have seen this year. Salaka's going to check back in. They're going Akichi and Salaka down low. That's 6-7 and 6-9. The two trees down low. Let's see if Lake Orion can score on them. Down low to Liddell. Find Shark in the corner. Corner three. And it's through! Ethan Sharkey with the clutch three! Bringing the game within one possession. Under, just under a minute left to go. Holder. Close defense by Sharkey. Sharkey sending a double now. Back on Holder. Holder finds Yanacek. Back to Holder. Yanacek. Back to Holder. Holder's going to hold the ball up top, and they're playing cat and mouse right now. Over to Kitchi. And Salaka's wide open. There's a whistle. And a timeout. A timeout by De La Salle. What would have been an open layup. They had a free shot. They had a free shot. They called timeout. That's timeout for De La Salle. 45, 43, 36 seconds left to go in this game. We're going to stick it right here. Ben, what's, what's what going on? What an electric on? finish. What's going on right now for Lake Warren? Everything's clicking right at the right time, huh? Definitely, Anthony. You know, they're making their shots. They're getting defensive stops. They're getting turnovers. Yeah. This is what has to happen all game, though. And I guarantee yep. Coach Andrade is going to talk about this in the post game, whether it's a win or a loss. Yeah. You have to play this way through the first three quarters and even the fourth. It can't come with two minutes left in the fourth quarter. It just can't, especially against a team who was the state champions last year. I'm telling you, Anthony, if this team, if this Lake Orion team played this way through the entire game, they'd be up by double digits right now. Yes, they would. And if they're taking advantage of their free throws, yes. they're making their open shots. Yep. I've, both teams have been missing their open shots. They've either been short or way long. And it's really, it's leading to a very, I'd say, low scoring affair here. Definitely, low definitely. Low scoring affair, especially with these two high powered offenses. Definitely, Anthony. You know, the, the one game that's really been a lower scoring game for, for De La Salle this season has been when they played Grand Blake, when they lost 42 to 31. Mm -hmm. I mean, we both, we have teams, we have, both teams are in the 40 point range right now. No 50, no 60, as you normally see in high school basketball here in Michigan. This is one of the biggest possessions of the game. If the Dragons can get a stop defensively, they can go down and run their offense, get the last shot of the game, and once again, it comes down to play execution. Yes. What we have talked yes. about from the beginning. The Dragons have a chance to redeem themselves here tonight. And what a big win it would be. The Pilots are a dece uh, uh, deceptive 7-5. and five. They've had a very tough schedule and are a very talented team. Let's see what they're going to do here down the stretch. Glasner's got it up top. Holder. Back to Glasner, almost poked away by DeGraffenry. Lake, or Lake Orion's bringing pressure and they're gonna call a foul on the floor. That'll be a foul on DeGraffenry. So that's gonna send Holder to the line. Holder's got two shots now. 23 seconds left, it's a two point ball game in the pilot's favor. These are big free throws. If he makes both, he'll make it extend to a two position game for the pilots. And he misses the first. 
off the heel, and Holder misses the first. Sharkey back in for DeGraffenry. That brings another shooter onto the court. And is going to come in now. He's going to take out Portis. So they're going to bring in some size down low. Here's Holder now at the line. He missed the first. What's he going to do with the second one here? And it's off. It rips out. Quay fly goes for the rebound. Here comes De Havrilla. 20 seconds left. Morrow's got it. He drives baseline. Finds Sharkey in the corner for three. No. Quay fly. Hop step. Trying to find the open man. Havrilla finds Morrow. Three ball. And that's off. It's poked away. Down low. Blake Liddell. Oh, and it just rims out. And no timeout called at the end of the game. The Dragons get a couple opportunities, and the opportunities rim out. Your final score here, 45-43. Ben, what just happened on that final possession? Why no timeout? Unless you, unless you have no timeouts, why not call a timeout and set up a play to run? Why are you making your guys run all the way down the court and do it on their own? No calls, no timeouts, no nothing. That cost the Dragons the game right there. And once again, Anthony, oh my goodness. It seems like it's just the, the theme of this team this season. Final play execution, right? One possession game, and it's a loss against a powerhouse school in Warren De La Salle. Thank you for watching this presentation of Dragon Sports. Today's game is a copyrighted presentation of Lake Orion High School's Dragon Broadcasting Program and Na Orion Neighborhood Television. Once again, the final score of tonight's varsity basketball game, De La Salle 45, Lake Orion 43. On behalf of our entire broadcast crew and my partner, Ben Shadle, I'm Anthony Schulte. So long, everybody.